Welcome everyone, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider, still rocking my uh, pandemic hair under here, but today we are here to talk about iOS 13.6, which is currently in its second beta, which is a whole confusing mess on its own, but we're going to talk about the new beta name and what are the big prominent changes that you can expect with this update. So let's go ahead and jump into it, starting with the name. Now this originally launched as the 13.5.5 beta, and then with the second beta of that process, it was renamed to 13.6. This is actually a milestone because it's the first 0.6, well, other than like 9.3.6, this is the first, like, something 0.6 update that Apple's ever released. Usually we're far enough along in the cycle that the next version of iOS is being released. So in this case, we'd probably get to 13.4 or something or 13.5 maybe, and then we'd have iOS 14 coming down the line, just smaller updates trickling out, you know, nothing with new features or anything because it's all saved for the big new update. In this case though, we do get a 13.6 and it's for a pretty obvious reason. We're living in unparalleled times and things are definitely different up in the air. So the reason that we had a 13.5 in the first place was it was actually a smaller incremental update, but Apple had to go to 13.5 because there was those API changes, those big new contact tracing APIs that included in the update. And anytime you have a big API inclusion or change like that it has to be a major point update and not a smaller point update. So like a 13.6 versus a 13.5.5. And that's what we're seeing here. So there's likely some behind the scenes changes. We're gonna speculate a little bit of what that is on why we got that uh, bump up in the name. And there are other small changes we should touch on first, I guess, including with the news app. If you ever, you're never gonna pay attention to any of these settings, so they don't really make a huge deal. But if you ever go into settings, go into news, there is now, it used to say privacy inside of that and towards the bottom of that reset identifier. But there's Apple news and privacy now, and newsletter and privacy. So those have just been renamed from privacy and there are now two of them that take you to just two different terms and conditions that'll pull up there in the sheet. So a small change there inside of the news settings. As far as the bigger changes go though, if we head into settings again, this time we go to general, then to software update, there's this option for customizing automatic updates. You can now opt to download iOS updates automatically, as well as install iOS updates automatically. So you have two different options there. Few different things you could do. So one, you could just turn off the downloads and turn off the automatic updates and just don't do anything. Or you could turn on the downloading of the automatic updates, but not to install them. And that way you can install them on your time, but they're already installed for when you want to use them. So maybe you have blazing fast Wi-Fi at work during the day, so you wanted to download those automatic updates, but you want to wait until you get home to manually install that update. You don't want to wait until the middle of the night to do it automatically. You just want to do it on your own. So now you have that option to download it automatically, but you can install it when you choose. Another big change here inside of iOS 13.6, and in this case beta 2, is the inclusion of symptoms inside of the health app. So going into health and then going to browse, you can see if we scroll towards the bottom, we have an option for symptoms. So there's all the normal stuff here. So do you have bloating, uh, body and muscle pain, do you have coughing, chills, congestion, all of that, and when you go into each of those, you can see the chart, you can see a track, and you can see a little bit of information about that symptom. Then you can add data points, you can manually put these in, and then you have severity controls. So whether it's not present, mild, uh, severe, and then when it started and stopped. So you have a lot of really granular control. And of course, these are being brought to third-party apps as well, so third-party apps that add to that health data. So I use uh, OneDrop, which can add my blood sugar readings and the Dexcom app, my blood sugar readings into the health app. And these were able to take care of that too. So you can maybe have an app out there that tracks your health or even doctor visits or anything like that. And all that'll just be input right there to the health app. So you don't have to manually add it that way, but maybe through third party apps. And that is likely the big API change that's seeing us change from a 13.5.5 to a 13.6 update. That major change of those new API features, those new kind of hooks for third party developers to tie into that additional health data to write and to read. So that is likely what changed that Apple needed to bump up this update from a 5.5 to just that 0.6. So what do you guys think of the new 13.6 beta 2 update? I know nothing not super exciting, but it is worth talking about why it got renamed and there's a couple big features, what they actually mean and why that all kind of played out. I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments or just ask me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU.
Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.